happy with that? Yeah. Very. <laughs> I want to become a plumber. My name's Alan Hart and today I'm going to do a video on someone who wants to become a plumber. Uh, I've been contacted by a guy called Richard who is, is ex-army and he wants to retrain and become a plumber and he's started to do that journey already. Um, we're going to do some soldering and we're going to do some bits and bats, maybe put a boiler back together and all that. Just general, um, an overview of plumbing in this video today. And also, if anybody's got an opportunity where they could give him um, or they could give him a job, um, that that's sort of like the aim of this video really as well. Um, yeah. Today's video is sponsored by Trade Help. Trade Help is a, an app for gas engineers and it's a free app um, for invoicing and to help and support your business. So please have a look at that app. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw Richard in deep end. I'm going to get him to strip this boiler down. He's never worked on a boiler before. I'm going to get him to strip it down and then build it back together. Also, <laughs> <laughs> That's not out of you, Richard. Uh, and Thanks. then, and then what we're going to do? I'm going to show him press fit. Let him do some press fit, connecting some pipes together. Maybe let him do some soldering and whatever else I can get and throw into mix for him into this video. So I've just got Richard. Is going to strip down this Baxi 600. This is a Baxi 600 combi boiler. And this is the first time he's actually worked on a boiler, so might need to give him a bit of help along the way. So we've just took the front cover off. So what are you taking out there then now, Richard? This is the this is the burner. Yeah. yeah. And what's the what's the other bit in the middle there? This bit here is your heat exchanger. Yep, that's it. You've been watching some videos, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> so what have we got? What components do we have in this, Richard? Okay, so we have a expansion vessel. Yep. Heat exchanger. Yes. We have condensate trap. Yep, condensate trap, yep. Um, pump. Pump, yep. Um, we have gas valve. Yep. And we... what, what's that red thing? Sorry, this one here. Oh, yeah. that's PRV. Yeah, pressure that's relief it. Valve. Okay. And what's that at the back? That's the uh, heat ex um, plate heat exchanger. That yeah, one? yeah, that's right. <laughs> what did you think of that then, Richard, for the first attempt? Yeah, it's good. I enjoyed that actually. First time I've ever been in the, inside a boiler, so yeah, it's good fun. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so. Richard's stripped a boiler down, put it back together. We're now going to look at some heating systems. So I've got a one pipe heating system here. So we'll have a quick look at a one pipe heating system. We've then got a two pipe heating system over there. So we'll have a look at that. We'll have a look at that two pipe heating system as well. And then we're going to look at some how to connect pipes and yeah, just general overview of everything to do with plumbing, gas, etc. So yeah, yet again, Richard, I'm going to drop you in deep end. This is a one pipe heating system. Yeah. How does it work? Okay, uh, exactly that. You've got a one pipe which will um, feed the flow and return on a loop back to the heat source. Yeah, so you would have a, you'd have your pump on, whatever, from the boiler. Yeah. It'd come round circuit and it goes back to the boiler. Yeah. And what I've said, um, you need to be careful if you have a, if you're going to mm. adapt a one pipe and if you're ever going to add going to add a radiator onto one pipe i have done another video on one pipe heating systems so please check that one out and that goes into one pipe systems in a lot more detail but that's the one pipe heating system yeah so this is a one pipe system as richard has just explained what we'll do now we'll have a quick look a two pipe heating system as well. So as I say, that's just a loop 
and that is how a one pipe system works. Right now Richard's going to tell us how a two pipe heating system works. Okay so initially the heat source will come from uh, like your boiler for example and so do you want to show us that? Yeah okay so uh, we've got it here so you've got the, from, from the boiler we've got the flow which will come round into your radiators, go into your radiators, first radiator, second radiator, through the circuit, and it's returned uh, from the, the, the second pipe back through, and it's returned back into the heat source again, back to the radiator. That's your two pipe system. And what would you do, what do you, what do you need to do with this system? How would you balance it and things like that? Uh, you've got, on your system, you've got uh, your separate valves, you've got TRV or your thermostatic radiator valve, and you've got the uh, uh, lock shield, which is used to balance the radiators. Is that right? So you, you would uh, turn it accordingly, obviously. That's exactly right. And then what we've got with this system as well, because we had the apprentices pipe this, they've piped it in all different materials. So we've got this MLCP pipe, the multi-layer pipe, which we'll have a look at shortly. We'll get Richard to do a little video for you on multi-layer pipe. And then we've also got the copper and we've got copper press fit. We've got speed fit on there as well. And right over this side, we've actually got a soldered fitting as well. So we've got all the different types that you'd normally find on a heating system. So now we're gonna drop Richard in at deep end again, and he's gonna show us how to do some pipe work. And we've got all different types of pipe work here. So we've got, we're going to use some press fit, we're going to use copper, we're going to join some copper to speed fit, we're also going to join some speed fit to speed fit pipe, and then we're going to look at the MLCP multi-layer pipe as well, which is there, and we'll join that as well. So, are you ready for that Richard? Yeah, cool, let's go for it. Right then, Richard, have you ever done any push fit stuff before? Uh, only at college. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah, so I should right know then. Come I? on then, you should know. Oh. Come on, show us what to do. Right, let's get some copper. It's like being on Blue Peter, this is. Uh... So just putting some copper pie. I'm going to connect, yep. so connect that to. Uh, We'd normally deburr this, wouldn't we? Inside yeah, as well. yeah, that's right. We'd deburr that. Way. Um, so we've got 22 mil elbow and a 15 mil reducer. So, um, so we put that in, inside. Pushes in, tightens up. And Just show that fit in on camera. So that's the speed fit fit in. And it's got a little clip, a little clip on there, and then that just pushes in like that. And then once it's pushed in, we just tighten that up. And when we tighten that up, this then becomes stiff. You can buy clips that you clip in there as well, and then that you won't be able to pull it back out if that's tight in there. Okay, so now we're going to. Uh this piece of pipe because it comes bent I want to try and do is straighten it so that it's easier to to cut and also you might not see from that angle but there's a mark here which we want to cut on the mark so that when we actually try and do it is uh, let's try and cut it on the mark Is that yeah. piece? I'll just show that piece on camera. Yep. So if we have a look on there now, we've just Richard's cut it on the mark there. And what that means is when he pushes the fitting on, he knows that he can push it to this mark here. And if it's to that mark, we know that the fitting is on correctly. There you go, Richard. Thank you. Okay, once you've cut it, you've got your piece of pipe in, in place, you need to put an insert in. So we've got a, uh, it's a 
15 mil insert. 22, 20, mil 22, insert. 22, yeah. 22 mil pipe insert. She goes in fully. And just, just one thing to point out on this as well. This is a double. It's got a double O-ring. So there's different types of inserts you can get for different types of um, plastic pipe. So that's just some something to check. Okay, and then we're going to attach attach the insert into the elbow. Push it fully in to the mark. You'll see when it goes to the mark, and then we tighten it up. That should be watertight. And if we see on there, you can see that that line, that one's there, but you can see that that is in. So we know if this was under the floor or something like that, we would know that this is in correctly. And just to show you again how easy that is, we just back that nut off and we pull that clip there. We can pull it back apart. And again, you can see the line there and the one there. We'll just push that together. And that's your push fit pipe. In. So at the moment now, we've got a 15mm side here that Richard's going to do something with shortly. And then we've got a 22mm side. So what we're doing next then now, Richard? Okay, so I'm going to put copper into the fitting, 15mm fitting. Yeah, so you've got 15mm 15 15 copper. Yeah. And you're going to put that into the fitting. Yeah. So I've cut the copper deeper at the end, which I've, which I've cut. And um, it's quite straightforward. Just Push it in, we'll say that. Push it in, you can hear it. Turn it, it should be tight. So that just goes in nice and easy, doesn't it? Yeah. So far, Richard's connected, well, so far, he's done the boiler. Fully stripped the boiler down, built it back up again. He's looked at a one pipe heating system. He's looked at a two pipe heating system. And now he's going to connect all this pipe work together. So he's connected the speed fit in, into the copper, he's connected the copper into the speed fit. And now he's going to connect a press fit fitting onto the copper. And it's also, he's also going to connect um, MLCP, which is multi-layer pipe. And we've got a fitting for that as well. So yeah, let's, let's see him do that. Just going to put the press fit fitting onto the copper pipe. Push the fitting on fully. Going to mark it to make sure it is on fully. So I'm just going to mark it around so you can see that the mark is on there. That way it doesn't doesn't come off. So you know it's on fully when you're pressing it. We get the press good. So just to point out with that, just, just, just to make, normally what you'd have with this, so normally what you'd have, you can get a tool, and the tool will show you the depth, and you can put that tool on first, and you can mark it, and then you put your fitting on. We don't have the tool with us today, so the other option is, if you put the fitting on like this, and then you mark it, and then once you've got it in place, and it's on wall or somewhere, it, it might drop out a little bit, but if you've got your mark on, you can see that it's dropped out a bit and you can make sure your fitting is fully on. What you don't want to do, you don't want to have the fitting a little bit on, say like that, and press it and it may seal for now. And you think, oh yeah, no problems, it's not leaking. And then later on, because the fitting's not on correctly, it could blow off. So you just need to make sure your fitting is on correctly. Back over to you, Richard. Thank you. Okay, just before I do press it, just one other point to make is the make sure that there is a O-ring inside the fitting itself. Uh, you get different colours, don't you? Is it is it yellow yeah, for that's gas? Yeah, right. So you've got yellow for gas and you've and got black, black for the water. water. Um, also, you just make sure the condition of it, make sure it hasn't been damaged yeah. as well. Yeah. So again, make sure it's fully in. Make sure it's to the the mark that you've made. And then try and press it. So open the jaws, make sure it's in place, 
and go through. No. It's fully on. Happy? <laughs> Right then Richard, so now you've got some MLCP multi-layer pipe and you're going to show yeah. how to connect that. Okay, yeah. So we have a fitting for that. That's the fitting with the uh, stainless steel cover over it. If it's taken out, you'll see that there is a double O-ring and like a shark type uh, sort of grip, isn't it really, yeah, for, yeah. for the pipe. So the pipe would, once this is deburred, the pipe would fit on. Well, it would fit on properly, wouldn't it? Really, I'll show you. So, first thing is to deburr the pipe with a, a deburrer. So you're turning it all the way around, remember? Yeah. yeah. So you're getting. And you're getting all you're the, making uh, it round, you're making the pipe round as well. Yeah, and that way it will fit. It'll fit onto the. Uh, the fitting will, will fit onto it, it won't. It won't. Yeah. Um, damage the o-rings with. We've also got a uh, holes in the um, the fit in there, so you'll know when the, the fitting is on. When the when you push the pipe on, you'll see that it's fully on. You'll be able to see that it's fully on, like so. That's the first part of the fit in there. And then now you need to press that with the press gun. Yeah. So now we need to change the jaws over. Okay. Quite simple with this model is you pull out the, press the jaws in, pull out the... You don't need to press the jaws in. No, just but come yeah, out and really. Yeah, just oh, pull it, does, it out. Yeah, yeah and that pull out. the jaws. Change the jaws over. So these yeah. jaws are the correct jaws for the fittings that we're using. So yeah. whatever fittings we're using, we need to make sure we've got the right jaws. Right. And I'm saying it's fully on. Press the fitting in, in. So the grey bit goes, if you go a bit further, yeah, that's, oh, that's it. it. Yeah, so it's so in. just show that on camera, show that where you've got it. Yeah. Okay. And then just press that same as you did with copper. Keep it in camera. <laughs> so you can see now Richard's pressed that fitting on. And if you have a look in that fitting, it's a little bit hard to see. If you have a look there, them holes, you can see you can see the white part, so we know that the fitting is on correctly. And one thing to mention: the jaws for the multi-layer pipe, the MLCP, and the normal press fit copper, the different jaws. So you need to make sure you've got the right jaws for whatever you whatever you're doing or the manufacturers. I use express fittings. Normally, and with express fittings, we use an M pattern jaw for that. This, this is Blonsol. This is MLCP and it's Blonsol multi-layer pipe. And with that, we use a TH, a TH jaw. So as I say, you just need to make sure that you've got the right jaws for the pipe or the fitting that you're using. Um, what I'll do now is I'll pass you back over to Richard and he'll connect the rest of this pipe work together. Okay, so now we're going to attach the, the fitting into the, 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 the copper press fit fitting. So what we did with the, the push fit, um, not the push fit, sorry, with the... The, the, <laughs> the press fit. The press fit. <laughs> it's a bit long day already. Um, you need to make sure when it's in that you uh, make sure it's in fully. Um, if you haven't got the tool which, which helps you with that, then you need to mark it. So, so make sure it's marked so you can see it. So when you know, when you press it, it's going to be in fully. You need to change the jaws over. Okay. Should 
can see that it's crimped, so it's uh, fully on. Happy with that? Yeah, very. I hope you've enjoyed this video so far. Please give Richard a like below. Um, as we all know, it helps with the uh, helps with the video, helps it get found in Google, um, in YouTube, should I say? Now I'm going to get Richard to do some soldering. So we've got some fittings here, socket, some copper, and get him to do some soldering for you. Okay, so I'm going to do some soldering. I'm going to cut the pipe. Going to clean the pipe um, with this like emery cloth, is it you can use? I'm then going to put some flux on the pipe. I'm going to use the um, socket, and I'm going to use some solder, and I'm going to apply heat. But obviously, you need to wear the correct PPE uh, that uh, that is recommended for the for the job, gloves and, and so forth. So just to recap there, Richard, of what you've done, you've cut your pipe, you've cleaned the pipe, you've cleaned the internal part of the fitting, you've put some flux on, yep. and now you're going to solder, you're now going to solder that fitting, yeah? Yes. You happy? Always. Are <laughs> you ready? So you might notice that we've, we're not in the same videos together, we're trying to social distance today. Um, we've got, that's his soldering, and done a really good job of that. What we'll do now, we'll have a look at some S plans, and some Y plans, and we'll chat about that. EPH Controls has kindly donated these two boards for us to look at. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm going to let Richard have a look at these boards. He can plug them in and we can play with controls and he can see how they all work. And then after that, we'll take off, um, we'll make sure they're safe, they're isolated, and then we'll, we're will we going to do some tests with multimeter as well. So we'll have a little, little play about with multimeter, just so Richard's had like a broad, um, you know, a broad scope of plumbing, if you like, all the different uh, aspects of plumbing. So look now. Right then, Richard. I spawns and Y plans. Yes, indeed. What can you tell us about them? Uh, difference is a Y plan is a mid-position valve. Um, a B, it, which is your incoming water from, from the um, from the boiler. Right. Yeah. B, which. which could say it stands for bath, so that's your uh, goes to your cylinder to hot water, and A for air, which will go to the central heating systems, radiators, and yeah. And what else is on it? 
So what else have we got on that system? On here, you've so got that. So how does it work to start when you've got your fuel, you, normally you'd have your fuel spur, wouldn't you? Yeah. Power in. Yeah. What, what else have you got on that system? Then you've got a program, you've got a wiring centre here. Is, this, is that what you mean, yeah? yeah. The wiring centre. You've got a programmer. Yeah. To, to program the heating or, or hot water. You've got on here a room thermostat. Yeah. And also you've got a, um, a cylinder, that's a cylinder thermostat, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. a cylinder thermostat. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then on, right on the side there, if you see that little light, that indicates the that the boiler would come on. Yes. Yeah. Do yeah. you want to plug that one in? Okay. And do you want to just have a look how that works? Can't you hear it as well, can't you? You can hear the... Yeah, you can hear it. You, you can hear them moving, yeah? yeah? Yeah, Right, Richard, do you want to explain how this works? How you get the hot water to come on? How you get the heating to come on? Maybe we could start with hot water? Okay, yeah. Uh, so, start off at the programmer. So we can press uh, for the hot water, the boost. But we also need the cylinder thermostat to be turned up. So I would say... 60 degrees I think it is and then boilers on okay so that will then call for heat yeah is that right yeah that's yeah. right that's exactly right but what yeah. you do in normal circumstances you might have it on on the timer yeah and it'd come yeah. on and off on times and your cylinder stat would also normally be set at yeah. whatever it's set at so 60 degrees normally mm. and that just always be set at 60 degrees yeah so do you want to turn them back off now and then what we'll do, you can show us how you would put the heating on. So we could just do that valve then. Yeah. Do that valve yeah. moving. So now would you like to put the heating on as well? Heating, um, yeah. So again, I mean, that could be on a, a program as well. Could yeah, so just press boost for now. Got, uh, the heating boost. And then we've got the room thermostat. So, so we can hear that valve moving there again now. Yeah, yeah. And once that valve's moved over now, the boiler will boiler fire. Fire up, won't it? And that's it. So that's here. What magic. So that's how a wire plan system would work. Yeah. Now, do you want to explain to me if you have your hot water and heating on at the same time, put them both on, and then how does that work? What what's happening with valve? We, so, so first okay. of all, put so, them on. First of all, okay, so put them on. So it's going to now call for heating and hot water. Mid position valve now will, the, there's, there's a ball I think inside there, isn't there? That's, or, yeah, that's right. And that will move now in, into the centre so it allows water to pass up through into the central heating system as well as the um, hot water. That's right. That's, yeah, so that's water right. Water pass both ways on, in this case, occasion. Yeah, that's exactly right. So it's a mid-position valve. Yeah. You've got A and B coming in, which is your main flow from your heat source, which is your boiler. And then whichever circuit you would normally have open, it would go around that circuit. But if you've got both circuits re required at the same time, it would mix it and it would go half one way and half, half, the, other. half the other. Exactly, exactly what you've said. Mm -hmm. So do you want to turn that one off now? And then what we'll do, we'll have a look at the S-Plan system. Yep. Right then, Richard, can you tell us what an S-Plan, how an S-Plan system works? Okay, S-Plan is, um, you've got different zones or different valves on an S-Plan system, um, which could uh, connect to um, hot water and one could go to central heating. Um, yeah, so it, as a, potentially. on a basic S-Plan system, yeah. One zone valve would feed the hot water cylinder, yeah. and one zone valve would feed the heating system. Heat. But you could have a multiple system with zone valves where you could have an S Plan Plus. So there's all different big, scenarios. Big and but on this scenario, yeah. yes, we've got one for heating and yeah. one for the hot water. Yeah, okay. So that's sort of one, one of the differences between that and the, the mid position Y plan. Yeah. Yeah, there's that. Um, still got your programmer wiring centre, uh, on this particular model you've got um, your thermostats are a wireless aren't they? So you've so you got, that, yeah, that's correct. So you got a wireless um, um, room thermostat and a cylinder stat 
Yes. Do you want, do you want yeah. to plug them in? Yeah. And again, we can see how they work. The good thing with these as well, on these valves, they have a little light on top of them. So you can actually see if they're working. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they also have a little plug on them, which I'll show you shortly, but you can unplug the heads and change the heads really easy. Mm. But again, I'll show you that shortly. Okay. So do you want to put... Two. Yeah. Same one, yeah, uh, yeah. So, to, it probably that's probably top one, maybe. Maybe the top one, yeah. Turn that right up, just turn it up to like 50 degrees or something like that. Uh, I don't know, like uh, it has to be 25 or 25. something, like that, maybe. So, that's that would be normal room start, yeah. So, that should call now for heating. Yeah. Cool, so we can it? see that valve now, can you see that valve moving? And the light as well. Yeah, if you see yeah. that valve actually moved, that lever moved. Oh, this, yeah, yeah. And now the boiler's come on. Brilliant. And again now, do you want to do that with the other valve? Okay, both on together? Or? Um, well, you can t turn that one off. Just, yeah, just turn boost off. That's fine. And then just turn boost back on onto the other one. And show the other one working. And then that one you need to turn that because this is the cylinder start again remember yeah so you can turn that normally that'd be like 60 degrees won't it around that so that should fire this up in a minute yep so the clock's now called for heat yeah you've got your valve the valve has started to move yeah the light on the front is is on it is so we know that that's calling for heat and the boiler's on and the boiler's on so that that now would be sending water around the hot water cylinder yeah so now do you want to put both zones on at the same time okay so just put boost on yeah boost on and that's up and that should yeah so both lights are on that's right. So now both of them balls inside are open. Yeah. And they're allowing flow through them. Flow through. And yeah. yeah. So that means that both circuits would be on. They'd both be sharing the heat load from the from the boiler or from the heat source. Yeah. Yeah. You happy with that? Yeah. Very. Brilliant. So what do you think? What's the main difference between the two systems? I think uh, I think practicality with with these, isn't it? Because you can place them anywhere. Is that right? Right, so if you go back to the y plan system, it, yeah. it's fairly limited because you can't really adapt that too much. Yeah. You can't really put more zones on. Yeah. Uh, and so also can, it's, more, add, su it's more suitable for smaller systems is, is the y plan. Right, okay. When you get to when you start getting to slightly bigger systems yeah. and if you want to put multiple zone valves on, then obviously you'd have to go for the for a zone valve yeah, style system, yeah. uh, an S plan hmm. or an S plan plus system brilliant yeah so should we have a look should we have a little look at the wiring and how these work now yeah I'd like to do that yeah, yeah. yeah and if we have a look at one of these zone valves it's got a detachable head on it and a detachable cable so if you had to change them in the future it makes it a lot easier so with the head you just undo that screw there and then there's a little um, clip there, just push that in, and then the head, and do that a bit more. And then the head will just clip off. So if that's on the system now, and your head's faulty, then you can just change the head. Also, it's got a plug-in cable on it, so you wouldn't have to start changing the wiring. It's just as a plug connection. On there and that just clips in there nice and easy it says <laughs> and it's got the lights as I say as well on the front which makes it um, you know if it's called for heat and then if the heat isn't coming through then you know that there's an issue there so this video is a brief look into plumbing or the overall 
job of plumbing of what we would do. So we're gonna have a we're gonna have a little look at the multimeter. I'm not gonna go into it too much in this video because I am gonna do a video just about millimeters. Um, also, we're gonna have a look at, a little look at the analyzer, the flue gas analyzer, and I might even get Richard to do a test on a boiler and let him do that. What do you think to that, Richard? Yeah, great. Um, so yeah, we'll have a little look. What I'll do now, I've got this book here, which is on electrics. I'm gonna get um, Richard to have a little look at this, and then we're gonna do a few electrical checks and tests. Uh, and as I say, it's only a brief, just a brief few checks, but I will do a, I'll do a full video on electrical checks later on. There you go, Richard, have a look at that. Oh, fantastic. So we're really putting Richard on spot now, and I've given him instructions. <laughs> give me a book. I'll give you a book. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you the most important thing. Before working on any circuit, you must ensure that the circuit has been safely isolated from the electricity supply. Absolutely. First so that's the, the most important thing. thing of all. If we're yeah. gonna work on any gas appliance, anything to do with electric, we need to make sure that it's safe and that we're, we're going to be safe if we're touching it. Yeah. Um, and that's what these instructions are about. Oh, yeah. And then what? Um, if you're going to isolate, if you want to work on a, a system, a boiler, um, be the first thing would be the uh, fuse spur. Yeah. So switch, switch off at the fuse spur, take the fuse out, keep it on you. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, that's safely isolated from that point. And on these here, these have got plugs. So if we if we pulled the plug out fully, yeah, then again we we would expect it to be safely isolated. Right. But we'd still need to check and test that it was as well. Yeah, yeah. We do. <laughs> Should we do that? <laughs> Before you do anything with electricity, please make sure you go on the appropriate safety training courses. Baxi do a very good course. Also, I believe it's going to be in the axe soon, so this will be, it'll be more, yeah, everybody will be doing it. Um, so yeah, make sure you go on the safety training before you start touching anything like this. We need to be safe. Uh, I'll pass you back over to Richard now, because Richard is the expert now on electrics, because on electricity, because I've given him that book for the first time ever he's read that book um, so we're gonna have a little look he's gonna have a little a little play with this with me supervising him and we're gonna make sure that he's safe while he's doing it um, and then as I say we'll move on to the flue gas analyzer and we'll test one of the boilers with the flue gas analyzer okay what I'm gonna do now is turn the switch pull the plug out and we should expect it to be safely isolated, but what we need to do is to confirm that. So we will need to check in the wiring center for um, the check whether it's isolated. Yeah, so we'll te test that with the multimeter. Yeah. So now you're looking in inside the wiring center. So there's a few different products you can use and this is to check the incoming um, socket so we can check that the earth and the well we can check that it's all correct because they've all lit up on there so we know that the earth is correct we know the lives correct and we know that the neutral is correct with that tester we've also got another device which is what i used to use when i was british gas which is called a socket and see and that also on there shows us that as earth is correct in the right place, as live is in the right place, and so is the neutral. And there's also a little button on here that you can test just there. And that also gives you a reading on this here. 
and that tells you how good the earth to the property is and that's what we'd like it to be so that's that's really good Richard's just having a go with the multimeter and he's just testing to make sure that he's got safe isolation at the moment I'm also going to go through some other checks with him with the multimeter but we, we'll do that in a in another video so there's quite a lot of different testers that we'd use as I say we've got the socket and see we've got a multimeter we've got the plug you've got um, a bolt pen as well that you can use um, and then you've got other type of testers as well um, as I say we're going to do a video a detailed video on, on electricity so we're going to move on now to the um, flow gas analyzer and Richard's going to show us how to use that so I'm going to drop him in deep end yet again is that all right Richard bring it on <laughs> Richard's now going to give us a brief idea of using a flue gas analyzer do you want to turn it on yeah okay turn on the analyzer and we need to fire up the boiler and then yeah. we're going to uh, test for emissions yeah so we're going to test for emissions this is the k 456 and this takes about 90 seconds when you first turn it on for it to work um, and then you need to read your manufacturer's instructions for whichever boiler it may be and see how you do the correct test for that boiler for this scenario now all we're going to do is a quick test we're going to run a tap and we're just going to show the principles of how to use the analyzer just sure. using it and then we'll test the air intake as well but that that's it we're not really going to go into how you would do it with this boiler in detail okay all right so what I'll do now is I'll just go run a hot tap. Yep, so I'm going to pull the plug out and test for emissions. Okay. Yep, so on that, what we'd be doing, what, if we, we've serviced the boiler um, and then we might be testing to make sure it's all safe afterwards. Um, and this this is what this machine is to do. Yeah. And obviously you'd learn more about this on on a training course. Yeah. And then do you want to put that one back in? And then we'll just um, we'll have a look at the air intake as well. So that one that you've just done now, all the flue gases. Yes. And then the one on the left hand side on this one, this is the air intake. And this is if we've got a long flue and things like that, this is useful because it tells us if the flues were mixing. Okay. So then again, we'd be looking on that just to make sure that that's all safe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you happy? Happy with that. I'll just go take my back off now. Okay. This video was just a little bit of an insight into what, what it's like to be a plumber and what type of things that you would need to learn. So I hope it's been of some use. Um, it's not so much plumbing school here, but um it's just giving you like an overview so that when you do go to plumbing school and go do some if you're an apprentice apprentice plumber etc just gives you a little bit of an insight into what you might learn when you go on them um, apprentice training courses or plumbing training or whatever whatever type of course you're going to do fast track courses or, or whatever whatever course that might be um, if, if, if anybody watching this has got any placements where they could give Richard um, an opportunity then that would be great. I'm going to pass you back over to Richard now shortly um, and he's going to tell you a little bit about himself and and hopefully as I say I, I will add, I'll add his email or some contact details below as well in this video um, in the comments and then you can contact him directly if you know if you can give him a chance so I'll just pass you over to Richard now hi my name is Richard Hodgson 
Uh, I'm not Alan's son, although I don't know, am I? No, I'm sorry. Um, first I of all, I thought you were my dad. <laughs> yeah, it's a great bit. First of all, um, if you're still watching, thanks. <laughs> this has been this has been great. It's been great fun for me, and I must firstly thank Alan for giving me this time. This he he's given up his day to help me as well as uh, for, for, the, for the YouTube video. So I'm hugely appreciative of it, you know, and to be able to stand here on his platform, sort of kind of begging for a job, really. Um, so I'm, uh, I live in Coventry in the Midlands. Um, I'm currently on furlough working for a civil engineering company, but my passion is to move into, into this sector, into the plumbing and heating uh, sector. I've worked in construction in and out for, for many years. Um, I've been in the forces, been in the, the parachute regiment, and so in that, in that itself kind of gives you drive, it gives you that resilience and that determination, that sort of mental resolve to, you know, to do what you, what you, what you need to do. And I'm desperately keen to sort of do this, really. Um, currently finishing off my level two plumbing, uh, sitting guilds qualification. Uh, it's an evening course, but I'm doing, I'm doing that while sort of balancing work and, and everything else as we, as we all have to do. Um, I'm also, uh, fortunate to be sort of semi uh, funded into doing a gas course or you know the fast track courses I guess um, and I'm looking to do that so uh, partly fund and, and also through the military charity to, to do a, the gas course and and then do my placement in my portfolio but of course my biggest fear really is, is what happens afterwards and it, it's you know I'm investing my time giving up my job to to retrain and everyone needs to step on the ladder every so often. So I'm kind of looking hopefully for, for, for a firm, for someone to, to perhaps uh, give me a shot, give, give me a chance to, you know, get, get on board and, and, uh, and sort of be a, sort of, uh, you know, a trainee, plumbing heating engineer. My passions are the, you know, the heating systems and, and boilers repairing. I like to take things apart, put them together again, problem solving, I love that sort of stuff. So I'm, I'm, that's kind of my field really. And uh, yeah, so, that's me, you know, and if you can help, I really appreciate it. Uh, and just lastly, thank you to you, to, to the viewers, and again to Alan, um, indebted to you all. Thank you ever so much, it's been, it's been, it's been a pleasure, it really has, thanks.